Hi everyone. Before I begin the video, I just want to make a short announcement saying that we're going to be taking a break from the execution security stuff on this channel to do a short series of videos on garbage collection. At my day job, I code almost entirely in C, so garbage collection is really something that I haven't been exposed to that much and I would like to learn more about. I'm going to be experimenting with a longer series format of videos as well, so the topic of garbage collection will span the next few videos. We'll see how it goes. Without further ado, let's get started. Developers today have been going more and more towards managed languages. A managed language is a language that runs with the help of what's called a runtime. In this scenario, the language provides the code to be run, and the runtime provides a bunch of services to make life easier and safer for the programmer. For example, in Java, you have Java programs and you have the Java Virtual Machine, or JVM. The JVM is a runtime that provides a bunch of nice to have features for programmers, but the main one we're interested in is garbage collection. Garbage collection helps manage an area of memory called the heap. When you allocate from the heap, you get what's called a reference. For example, in this Java code, you have a reference X that refers to an int object. In Java, objects are allocated on the heap, so we might have something like this. The reference X allows us to refer to the object on the heap that we just allocated. If we were to pause the program and look at all the objects that have been allocated, we would get a larger version of this picture, perhaps something like this. This picture is called an object graph, which contains all of the objects that have been allocated as well as all of their references. There are a few interesting points here. First, notice that there can be multiple references to the same object. There can also be references within an object to other objects in the heap. And finally, there can be no references to an object. This last case where there is no reference to an object is of special interest to us. This situation can happen if we allocate an object from the heap, but the reference to that object is a local variable that goes out of scope. Remember that while heap objects have an unbounded lifetime, references to heap objects are still variables and thus must obey scope rules. For example, this in object has a reference x, which goes out of scope here. This means that after this point, our in object will no longer have any references to it. Once all the references to a heap object are lost, it becomes impossible to refer to that heap object again, which means the object is essentially useless. In garbage collection terms, the object is dead or unreachable. Contrast this with objects that are alive, meaning that they have one or more existing references to them. The main job of a garbage collector is to collect dead objects and free them for reallocation. When you think about it, this definition kind of makes sense because dead objects are useless, kind of like garbage, and it's the garbage collector's job to collect the garbage. A program that's using garbage collection can be logically divided into two threads. One thread is called a mutator. Like the name suggests, a mutator changes or mutates the object graph by allocating more memory or moving references around. The mutator thread is usually the program code itself. The other thread is the collector, which runs the garbage collection logic. You can think of this as a formal way of saying that garbage collection is essentially code that runs in a different thread than the main program, but is responsible for cleaning up dead objects that are created by that main program. Many programmers are already familiar with what goes on in the mutator thread, as that's the code we write, but fewer are familiar with the collector thread, which is what we're going to explore in this series. Over the next few videos, we're going to explore four basic types of collectors, mark sweep, copying, mark compact, and reference counting. We'll discover the trade-offs made by each approach to garbage collection and talk about how they're different from one another. This video introduced the concepts of the heap, references, the difference between dead and alive objects, and mutator and collector threads. We'll use our newfound vocabulary in the next video to talk about the mark sweep collection algorithm, as well as dive into more detail about what kind of memory management structure needs to be in place for garbage collection to work. As always, thanks for watching. 